In the last session, I showed you a simple four fret exercise, and I really hope you've been working on this, as it's a perfect opportunity to use and practice the ideas and techniques that I've shared with you so far. During the exercise, you've probably noticed that playing down the neck is much harder to do, as it seems more difficult to gain complete control over your fingers. Working on and developing how your two hands coordinate and work together is one of the hardest things to achieve on the bass, and it's essential that the two very different techniques of fretting and plucking grow together. I hope you can see that great fretting hand technique coupled with an inefficient and clumsy plucking hand just isn't a good combination. Take my advice and invest in yourself by developing all aspects of your playing and musicianship along together. Rather than practicing what you can do already, I urge you always to focus and build upon your weaknesses. For example, if you're finding it harder to play our four fret exercise down the neck, then take your time and practice only this until it becomes as easy as everything else. If you practice in this way, I guarantee that you'll move forward quicker with the confidence of knowing that you're always addressing your weaknesses. What we're going to do now is expand upon the four fret exercise and in the process introduce you to another technique. I'm going to show you how to play what we call a chromatic scale. In music, we use the word chromatic to describe a series of notes that are a semitone apart. Making use of this new term, our four fret exercise can now be thought of as chromatic groups of four notes played up and down the fingerboard. So, playing a chromatic scale on the bass is easy. All we'd have to do is play up the fingerboard a fret at a time. Now, we could just go ahead and continuously play up the entire length of the string, fretting every single note in turn. And of course, this would give us the chromatic scale, but I'd like to show you another way of playing it across the fingerboard that'll force you to develop another key technique. This involves moving and playing down across the other strings. To start with, I'm going to show you a descending chromatic scale. So we're going to start on a higher pitch note and descend in pitch as we play through the scale. This time, I'd like you to begin with your little finger on the note of C on the G string, like this. If you're still working on learning the fingerboard, a C is found on the 5th fret. From here, what I want you to do is play a 4 fret descending pattern starting from the little finger and ending on our index finger. Now, in order to continue the scale from here, we now need to move down across the strings. Every time we move down a string to continue playing the chromatic scale, I want you to just think of starting the descending 4 fret pattern a fret higher each time. So, as we started on the 5th fret of the G string, and we're now moving down onto the D string, this time you want to be starting with your little finger on the 6th fret, like this. From this note, which is an A flat, we can again descend through the four frets and onto the next string down. Once again, remembering to position our little finger a fret higher as we change string. From the seventh fret, which is the note of E, just play down through four frets and continue onto the bottom E string like this. The little finger once again starts a fret higher, so we're now on the eighth fret or note of C. Just finish off by playing down the four frets, ending on your index finger. From this position, we can then repeat the process in reverse, back across the neck, so we end back up on the note of C on the G string, which is where we just started. Now it's your turn to play along with me. We'll play the exercise as I've just shown you, first descending and then back up in pitch, but this time we'll use the metronome to ensure we keep at a steady tempo. As you play, really get used to how it feels to move your plucking hand across the strings, and again, if possible, please try to use alternate fingers to play each note. OK, let's give it a go. After four, one, two, three, four.
hopefully you can begin to see that playing a chromatic scale this way creates a shape across the fingerboard. And in order to play it well, just think of where you need to place your finger that plays the first note in each 4 fret group. If the first finger's in the right place to begin with, then it's easy for your remaining fingers to continue and play the other notes in the sequence. I really encourage you to develop this exercise for yourself. For example, give this a go. Every time you've completed playing the scale shape across all the strings, either up or down, try starting a new chromatic scale shape, but a fret higher. See, I'm playing down in pitch here, but instead of going back up through the same series of frets, I'm going to shift up a fret like this before I play the scale shape back up. Then, once I'm at the highest note again, just like this, I'll move up another fret before I repeat the chromatic scale shape down across the fingerboard. I guarantee that this exercise will really help you gain greater control over all of the fundamental techniques that need to come together when you play the bass. If you find that you're still thinking about what each of your hands are doing as you're playing, then this exercise is absolutely perfect for you. And with practice, you'll soon be able to focus solely on the playing rather than thinking about how to play. Just keep practicing and I'll see you next time.